Hello everyone and welcome back to G.I. June on Jesse Heck Creative. Today we're going over Movie Baroness 19 and Movie Scarlet 20 from the G.I. Joe Classified series. Let's get to it. So here's the Baroness as played by Ursula Corbero in the film. She is a good actress, she did a good job with it. A little bit too like wily for my taste I think. But she did the funniest line in the film when she's fighting all the good guys and fighting with the good guys at least against the main villain of the film who basically has like an infinity stone or something you're not gonna watch the movie you know I'll just spoil it whatever she literally says F this and leaves the film until the end credits the only f-bomb in the movie and one of the funniest parts of the entire movie I laughed because it was so weirdly and badly done so let's take a look her face doesn't really look much like Ursula Cobero she reminds me a little bit of uh, Moira from the uh, uh, House of X wave that line I reviewed a little while back uh, with the glasses and the hair. A lot of people were saying they could use that head as a base for her. At least a uh, comic version or something. And that would work, I guess. Pretty good figure. Uh, a lot of that same kind of like leather and matte combo. That shiny plastic. Except sort of reverse. There's a lot less shiny plastic on this Baroness as there was with the uh, number 13 version. So going over the figure. Uh, it looks nice. It's okay. I don't know about the choker. Her neck's a little bit long. Uh, but proportion-wise, she's okay. She's very tall, which is pretty cool. She has high heels that look really good. Uh, she has boot cu cuts here, which blend really well, very nicely, really good. So yeah, that's kind of the figure. Just quick articulation. Uh, it's on a hinge, down, up, swivel, a little bit of tilt over there. Bottom neck moves also, goes up this far, down, swivel kind of all the way around. You have to, you know, get over this hump right here and the knife in the back that we'll go over in a little bit. The arm swivel at the bottom over here. No bicep swivel. It hinges up this much, not really that much at all. Hinges down. Swivel at the wrist. We go up and down with the gun motion on both hands, which is pretty good. We have an upper upper crunch for the ab down, not that far not that far back disappointing swivels a little bit on both the hips and the chest over here we also have the splits right here she can go down with the hips as with every other GI Joe classified figure and up at the hips and back pretty okay that's fine by me swivel at the top down here yeah that's pretty good. I like it. Swivel up here, of course. That's great. Really well hidden. Down and up with not a, not a pivot, but a twist. And two peg holes at the bottom of the feet. She comes with this gun right here with a silencer. The silencer actually looks pretty nice. There's a lot of, you know, little sort of markings on it. Pegs in right there. It also has a little peg hole for some blast effects if you want to put them on there. Nice looking gun. Reminds me of something in Marvel Legends. This is painted a dark brown. Whatever this thing is, looks like a handle or something, it's pretty cool. I have her hold it as a handle anyways. Moving to the side, we have these cool snake knives. They're like dolphin fins in a way. They're actually pretty neat. They look really super cool. And not that pointy too. They're a little bit rubbery. They're very nice. There's a snake pattern right over here on the top. It's the same with the other knife. They look good together. Maybe, you know, you know, say cheese, bunny ears. You know, just something cute, I guess. But yeah, she has pretty okay accessories. The sculpture of these is really nice. This gun has been used a million times, probably. And uh, yeah, Baroness is a good figure. I, I like her. It's actually pretty nice. The paint over here is applied uh, just okay. It doesn't really match the skin tones at all. These are like three different skin tones. That's kind of a minus in my book. The belt is pretty okay. It doesn't really float as much as the other one. It has those same two you know, straps at the bottom for the weapons just pin that there pin that there push that down into here that works and then give her the gun and you're all set for the Baroness she looks really cool yet I don't I don't think like everything anything just surface anything past surface level is just you know debatable with her it's a good figure not a great one movie Baroness just stands over six inches tall Here's movie Baroness next to the regular Baroness and Akiko, and I think she looks like inferior to the regular Baroness. Just a lot more pop, a lot more color, a lot more stuff going on with her. She has, you know, less going on, and she just doesn't look as good. 
honestly. The long hair works better for her. You know, she could have long hair, it just kind of betrays the look of the character. Don't get me wrong, it's it's fine. It's okay, but it's kind of like Catwoman, as if she was a G.I. Joe character, instead of this kind of like, you know, armored, kind of like snake-themed, points everywhere. It just screams comic booky kind of villain. Also, here's Kiko and Jesse Heck Creative. So, I've been meaning to ask you, what are you the Baroness of? Is it like a country or a province or like a, you own a castle or what? what is it? Tell me. What? Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. So here's Movie Scarlet, and I think she looks really great. She captures a lot of what the actual original figure had, the feeling of that, plus a more realistic battleground hardened Scarlet, in a way. She shows up for like one third of the movie. She's played by Samara Weaving, does a great job with the character. You know, I think, at least. I liked it. It was pretty good. You know, she didn't show up for most of the movie, but I think her presence was felt. She, you know, brought more to the team of Joes, and it was really good. I'm really glad she was in the film, and I hope to see more Joes in the movies. So, let's go over this figure. Look at this beautiful, like, battle damage over here. Some sort of chipping and stuff, from, like, mortar shells and whatnot, from, like, different, you know, attacks and everything on the armor. Looks really great. It's carried down to here, where that looks, you know, really battle damage and really good. Looks very nice over here. The nice little striations of the metal looks really good. Very nice. Same over here. A little sort of sinewy pattern over there. Really cool. Really cool. A little bit of yellow harkens back to the original figure. Looks great. I love that a lot. We have these nice yellow. More yellow over here. More yellow. This yellow stripe going up all the way. This chest armor, you know, probably would go down all the way. It's a jacket, you know, kind of thing. We have this nice, like, little, little bit floaty, kind of, I think it's sort of stuck to, like, almost like molded to the thing. It's like a little bit tight, so it probably would be, you know, a little too tight, but it's kind of, like, fits really well. Snug. Very snug on her. We have this nice, like, sort of honeycomb pattern for, like, you know, Kevlar, um, I think, or some kind of, like, you know, battle-ready material. And we have regular just pants, you know, on that. That's really good. Looks very nice. We have a little paint blemish right over here on the top where her hair touched it. So, yeah, that's fine, I guess. It looks really nice back here, the paint, though. Otherwise, the red little thing right here harkens back to her figure, I believe. Looks really good. The brown looks very nice. The shade, the yellow looks nice. This isn't gunmetal. It's some kind of gray, but I like it even better than gunmetal. This is a wonderful figure. Oh, and the face I forgot to mention. So let's just go over that face real quick. Samara Weaving looks really good. Captures the figure pretty. Captures her figure pretty well. Uh, we have a little mole down here too. Some blush. The lipstick. The eyes look really nice. Looks very good. Very nice looking figure. The only accessory she comes with is this little bow. It doesn't like break as much as the other bow. And I like it more actually. A lot of people have been using this as their Scarlet from the, you know, comics and action figure line instead of the movie line, and I think, you know, it's worthy of that. It's a really great figure and deserves to be in more than just the movie. So definitely, her and Akiko can go into your regular G.I. Joe collection. Or not, I'm not stopping you. But yeah, okay, so let's go over the articulation. The head's on a swivel ball, it's on a ball, dumbbell thing. Get a lot of rotation out of that head right there, looks really good. You can cock it, you can go up, up, down. Pretty good, not too much. This, this hair kind of like gets in the way of posing sometimes and you don't want to like stress it too much because it might break. I'm not sure. It already destroyed the back a little bit, but I'm not really complaining. She also has a little hole in the back, a little peg hole in case you want to use a flight stand or something. She's jumping, kicking somebody. She did a cool backflip in the movie and that was really neat. Arm goes up. This arm, the same thing. Down and down and hinge. Uh, less than 90. Uh, yeah, they have to fix that. They'll fix it soon anyways up and down with the hinge right here and same thing on the other side we have a swivel on the top going left and right up and down combined with the the hip swivel you know not not really that great on the front on the back it's pretty good you know exposing some stuff back there a little more yellow that's always nice to see but it goes all the way around you can swivel it and it makes a little clicky noise that's pretty good down on the pegs on the hips and out hindered a little bit by this so just watch out for that. 
That's really nice. Looks really good. It goes up and up. Swivels at the tops. Up over here. Not really that great on that. Swivels right here. Down. Up. Pivot. And it's kind of more of a pivot this time. It's less of a swivel and more of a pivot. Two pegos at the bottom of the feet. I'm debating on making her better than Akiko because you can use her for the actual line. But then again, Akiko could be used for the actual line too. I'm torn. I think I might go with Scarlet. I don't know. Just something about the uh, articulation scheme and the figure and how you can use it for multiple lines. And it's a classic character. Might win me over. The paint's really good too. I think it's better than Akiko. Akiko's a little bland for my taste in a way. But there are a lot of good things about her sculpt. But this figure just, you know, excels, I would think. It's much better anyways. And yeah, I'll, I mean, Akiko gets second place. But Scarlet is tops in my book for this little mini line, at least. Scarlet stands at just under six inches tall. Here's the whole movie line together in my ranking order. So at the bottom is Storm Shadow. He's just terrible. His eyes are mismatched between the head sculpts. It's that bad. He's a horrible cream color. He should be pure white. What were they doing here? It's awful. Snake Eyes himself is next. I hate the character from the movie, but this figure just doesn't really do it for me. It's just too much black. It doesn't have enough, you know, things that, you know, can pop. The knives are really cool, but really misplaced. And the sword is just not really that great. Again, this is in context of the movie. I shouldn't be giving it that, but the arms are really loose, and that's why I kind of hate it. It's just so weird and kind of bland and cash grabby. The head sculpt for Henry Golding, though, is top notch, though. We come to Baroness, the middle child of the pack. She's good, but not great. She fits the Baroness moniker, yet she kind of looks a little too. I don't know, in a way, she doesn't look like she's that ready for battle, I would think. You know, a lot of weird, just choices with her, the short hair and the lack of, you know, battle armor and stuff just sort of irks me. The two swords are way, way less threatening looking, I would think, and it just doesn't really do that much for me. Akiko is a step up from the past three figures by a long shot and outranks them by 500 miles. She's a great figure, yet redoing her joints and moving her joints around a little bit does have some weird, you know, action figure-y looks, and it just doesn't really appeal to me, at least. But she's an amazing figure, and it has a lot of great potential to be in the Joe line as far as different figures go. And she's actually a really good body sculpt, and they are reusing her for the Blue Ninja coming up, so I'm happy about that. Scarlet's the best. She has color. She's not cream or black. She has yellow. She has, you know, brown. And yeah, she's basically from a different sort of world than any of than these past four figures, yet she's just really good. She works out as a great Joe figure that you can replace the Scarlet from the previous, you know, line and just use this one. It works out really great. The crossbow is amazing, and honestly, she just is one of the more perfect figures in the line. She's a really good figure in a movie that was bad. So here are the previous two Scarlets next to movie Scarlet and the Baroness. I think that these two work well as sort of a precursor to this. Yet, now that I think about it, these two figures are here for a reason. If this one were in the actual, you know, comic book sort of action figure kind of line, she looked too much like a real character, I would think. So I'm glad to have these two and this one to use in those different movie slash comic booky universes. And also here's Jesse Heck Creative. No, no, Scarlet, you've always been the winner. Take my popcorn and a bow as a token of my appreciation, and please feel free to ignore the person to my left trying to walk through my arm. Overall, we had some pretty great figures this time around, at least in the top three of the movie line. Baroness was pretty good, and even though she didn't really capture the look of Baroness, I don't think, as far as, like, having enough armor, she worked out pretty well. The hair could be longer, I think, but that's kind of just my thing. She did have shorter hair in some of the, uh... TV shows and everything, particularly Renegades, yet this didn't really look that much like Baroness or the actress in question. It was pretty good, but it could have used a little more to me. The accessories are, again, still pretty good, yet, I don't know, it's just missing something here, I think. Scarlet is a whole other beast. She's a wonderful figure, a great character, and she just looks like that classic G.I. Joe we all know. Her hair looks amazing as far as the sculpting goes. The paintwork is incredible on her. It looks really nice as far as battle damage. 
And just the coloration and color blocking is exceptional too. Her face sculpt looks really great also. And her accessory is better than the figure that inspired her. So yeah, I think that she's an awesome figure. Baroness is pretty good too. The line was okay as a whole, as far as these like five movie figures are concerned. Maybe we'll get another wave when the Lady J show comes out. But who knows after that box office bomb. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more G.I. June on Jesse Heck Creative. Thank you so much for watching Jesse Heck Creative. Feel free to click like, subscribe, share, or leave a comment. You can also visit us at jessieheckcreative.com where you'll find more reviews like this one. Thanks again for watching and keep being creative. Stay tuned.